Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 25th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A reader sent us on Friday an interesting email that included an XPS attachment. Now, these are attachments you don't really see often. XPS here stands for XML Paper Specification. And as Lorna describes, it sort of sounds like Microsoft's answer to PDF, essentially an XML file that can be used to distribute marked up text. In this case, it turned out to be just spam. Lorna says the idea here is probably to bypass various filters that block sort of known malicious or known unusual attachments, but XPS for not being used very often probably hasn't made it to any of these blacklists. And Palo Alto's Unit 42 came out with a report looking at recent trends in exploit kits. Now, exploit kits are these uh, building blocks that criminals use a lot in order to spread malware. There have been less of them over the last year. And another thing that Palo Alto reported was that there are really only eight different exploits being used currently in the most prevalent exploit kits. And while these exploit kits themselves are constantly being developed, and for example, there are now new payloads like crypto coin miners, overall, the exploits being used are not really all that cutting edge. Now, on the other hand, Malwarebytes a couple of weeks ago came out with their own report. Now, their report covers a little bit more recent data and they saw one in an explorer and one flash exploit being used that was from a couple months ago. So uh, they slightly paint a little bit of a different picture, but I think uh, one of the basic lessons here is that keeping your browser, keeping your plugins up to date is really important and probably the best thing you can do against these exploit kits. Yes, anti-malware helps too, but probably not as well given the wide variety in these exploit kits as compared to just keeping your system up to date. And TLS configurations continue to remain a moving target. The latest goal here is to get rid of TLS version 1.1. In order to work towards the goal, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, that's the organization responsible for these famous RFC Internet standards, has started the process of deprecating TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So far, all already PCI is sort of urging users to no longer support TLS 1.1. But the IETF, of course, has a much broader audience. So once they're releasing an RFC that officially deprecates these older versions of TLS, there is less of a push on software makers or so to actually still build support into their software for these old versions. So definitely time to get ready to turn off TLS 1.1. From my own experience, TLS 1.0 was really the hard one to get rid of. Uh, there were still uh, quite a few of sort of legacy clients and so that used TLS 1.0. We finally managed to turn it off and then actually to turning off TLS 1.1 once TLS 1.0 is disabled, it turned out to be relatively straightforward. There were not really a lot of compatibility issues because most systems that do support TLS 1.1 will also support TLS 1.2. And mobile security firm App Theory looked at how Android applications use Firebase. Now, Firebase is sort of a JSON backend that Google offers to Android developers, very popular with Android. So what happens is that your Android application will connect back to the developer's Firebase instance. Problem here, of course, is that if it's badly configured, then all users use the same credentials, the same endpoint, and have, in essence, access to each other's data. And that's exactly what App Theory looked at. App Theory looked at 2,271 different applications that exposed their Firebase endpoints. And via those endpoints, about 100 gigabytes of data were exposed. 
And the data exposed wasn't just public data. For example, it could have been things like catalogs or such that uh, really don't require any access control. But instead, these researchers found uh, 2.6 million passwords, and these are plain text passwords. They also found protected health information, GPS locations, financial records, and then of course, lots of social media tokens. And as a reminder, while I'm talking about application security, I will actually be teaching our Defending Web Application class first week of September in Amsterdam. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.